I'm Bobby and I like to make stuff. Today we're going to make custom trays that can fit any cabinet. We're back here in the kitchen today and we're going to do a little project that I think a lot of people could use whether you're renovating a kitchen or just have a big cabinet that you want to make a better use of. So you saw me before make these cabinets and I made these drawers out of really simple construction and the front of them has a drawer face on them so it covers up the pocket holes on this. Well today we're gonna do something different. We've got these really large cabinets and they're almost unusable they're so big and so we want to take advantage of the space and organize it better by making some trays that can come in and out. Now these are not going to have a drawer face on them so they need to look a little bit better they need to be a little bit nicer so we're gonna make them with something I've never done before dovetails and we have to figure out how to make those fit behind this opening and on the outside of this hinge so let's head down to the shop and we'll figure out how we're going to do it we're going to be starting this project with a rough piece of cherry i'm going to mill this down into half inch pieces obviously you could just go buy some half inch material if you want to and we've covered the milling process pretty extensively in one of the bits videos and in a bunch of other videos so milling montage I wanted to say something about the riving knife on my saw. People often ask why I take it in and out sometimes. And oddly on this saw, the top of this riving knife where it should be a little bit below or right at the edge of the blade is actually higher. So if I'm cutting a slot through something, not cutting all the way through, the riving knife will actually get caught inside the piece. And so sometimes I'll have to take it out if I'm working the blade up through a piece of material. That's something I'm gonna have to figure out either to adjust the saw or just grind down this top edge to make it. But I'm just letting you know that this needs to be there for safety and I only take it out when I absolutely have to. I finally got these pieces milled down to half an inch. Now, I'm using solid wood here. You could make drawers out of plywood if you want, but the next step of this would actually not turn out so great if you used plywood, and that's because we're gonna add dovetails to the ends of these. Now, this is something I've never done before other than just some test pieces here in the last couple days. For this, we're gonna be using a jig. If you wanna cut all your dovetails by hand, be my guest, but that's not my thing. Instead, we're gonna use this jig from Rockler, and it's gonna make it a lot easier. Now, when you look at this jig, it's gonna look pretty complicated, but it's actually not. In fact, on the back of the instructions, these are all the steps that you have to take to actually make a dovetail with this jig, depending on whether you're doing half or full. That means whether you see them on both sides of the joint or just on one side. I spent about 30 minutes trying to figure this thing out and get it set up. It's totally easy, and now that it's set up, I can just cut all of the dovetails on all of the pieces for all of my drawers and be done with it. Now the cool thing about this is it comes with dust collection, but basically the important part is that it has these different pieces you can put in, whether you're doing half or full dovetails, and then all of the settings are just based on the material that you're using. You have these kind of clamp pieces, I'll show you how it works in a second, but there's not really that much to it, even though it looks a little overwhelming to get started. So one of the important things that I'm learning here about dovetails is that you need to make sure that you have your pieces laid out in your box in the correct orientation, meaning that they're overlapped correctly like they're supposed to end up, and that you number all of those corners, all of the joints between each piece to make sure that you get them in the right order. You also wanna make sure that you have all of the upper faces marked all the way around so that when you put them in the jig, they're all facing the right direction. Another important thing to think about when you're milling up your lumber or preparing whatever stock you're going to use is that you need to have some scrap available to test on. I did quite a few tests with this jig to get it dialed in to make sure that they were tight. You can very easily get the joint to be too loose or too tight or too short or too deep. In fact, right here you can see that I cut it way deeper than it needed to be just in the process of learning the jig. Once I ended up with a good joint that's nice and tight, then I know that it's all set up and then I can start moving my pieces through it. So just make sure that you have some scrap available that's the exact same thickness as your final pieces. I'm gonna be doing half blind dovetails here and that makes it easier because you only have to use one router bit. 
Basically, you just put in your two parts that you're gonna be cutting and you can cut them at the same time. If you do a full dovetail, you have to use two bits and cut them separately. Once you get the jig set up, you get the pieces in here and lined up. And then you clamp it down with some extra support pieces on the sides. And then you wanna just adjust it until it's nice and tight and all the pieces are fit perfectly together. The pieces are offset by half of an inch, the thickness of the material. And that's because when you take the router bit through here, you're cutting out this one and this one, leaving a pin right here. So that when they end up lining up, the pin that's here will go into the slot that's being cut right there. So now's the moment of truth to make sure that I had my settings correct. Some glue will make that really firmed up. I could probably tighten it a little bit by moving the bit. So I may do that on the next one, but it's pretty close and I think it'll be just fine for what we're doing. So luckily each one of these is only a few pins, so it doesn't take very long to do, but I have to do four corners on each one of these trays and I have to do six trays. So I have a whole lot more of this to do. Let's finish that up and then we'll put them together. This video is sponsored by Policy Genius. Now, if you're like me, there's a lot of things that you kind of put off doing. Changing air filters, changing your oil, getting insurance, and that's because a lot of times they're a hassle. One of the things you don't want to put off is finding the right life insurance. And Policy Genius can make that super easy. And this is great because there's just a ton of options out there. They help you narrow it down to the best options and the best prices. It's really simple. You just go to the Policy Genius website, put in a little bit of information about what you need, and then Policy Genius makes it easy to compare quotes from over a dozen top insurers all in one place. In fact, you could save 50% or more on life insurance by comparing quotes with Policy Genius. Getting insurance can be really overwhelming. There's a lot of paperwork, a lot of stuff to handle, but Policy Genius will handle all the paperwork, all the scheduling for free, and they don't add any other fees. Make sure that you take the time to take care of your belongings and the people in your life by getting the correct insurance for whatever your needs are. Once you find the one that's right for you, it's super easy to get started. So to start comparing quotes and simplify insurance buying, go to policygenius.com slash ILTMS and get started. And big thanks to Policy Genius for sponsoring this video. All right, I'm just putting some glue in all of these and we're gonna knock them together. Luckily, they're tight enough that you can just kind of knock them together and they'll stay. The glue is definitely gonna firm them up and it will make the wood swell a little bit if there is any gap. It will definitely be tight when it's all said and done. So I'm just gonna glue these up and then we'll worry about putting in the bottom of the tray. So just knocking these together with a little glue, it hasn't dried yet. This thing is already plenty strong, plenty sturdy. I did notice that some of this cherry actually has some cracks in it that I didn't see before. And they're very small cracks, like there's one that runs right through there and that piece will move a little bit. Luckily, it is kind of caught around the dovetail, but I'm gonna reinforce it just to make sure that it doesn't split anymore. Uh, as best I can, I'm gonna use some CA glue for that. So I'm just gonna kind of mush it in there. After it dries, I'll sand it down smooth and hope for the best. Now that I've got this glued up, I've got the cracks sealed with some CA glue. Now is the point where I'm probably gonna lose some of you. So far, we've been working at kind of a high woodworking level, fine woodworking, doing dovetails, even though it's using a jig. But next up, we're gonna do something that's purely for strength and simplicity. We're gonna do pocket holes. Now, before you get angry, listen to the use case here. I have half inch material, and I need to add a bottom to this. And I could add a rabbet all the way around and inset that panel a little bit, but there's not a whole lot of material there. Luckily with a pocket hole, you can get plenty of strength for the bottom of a drawer, and it's gonna be completely hidden because the pocket holes will be on the bottom and you're never gonna see them. Yeah! All right, so next up, we're gonna put some spacers underneath this so that the piece will sit down pretty much flush with the top. It's gonna to inset just a little bit. So I just ripped down some scraps from the scrap bin, and those are gonna sit in here. And then that will allow us to push it all the way down onto those pieces and then drive in the screw. So just gotta add some glue on all four sides, drop it in, and screw it in place.
So, of course, it's really ugly like this because you can see the extra glue, you can see the pocket holes, but once you get it flipped over, you got a pretty nice looking little tray here. And after some sanding, get rid of the glue and the edges, you'll be good to go. This is the last one, so I've got them all put together, but there's still a lot of sanding to do, and then I'm gonna coat them all with several coats of polyurethane. Then we've gotta install them, and that is still a thing I haven't figured out. We've gotta work around the door hinge that's kinda of sticking out, so we're gonna have to figure out a way to push out the outside rail so that these can actually clear the door. So the way I figured out the width of my tray was I took this full width here, I subtracted one inch, which is two drawer slides that are half of an inch each, and then another three quarters of an inch. That three quarters of an inch does not clear the hinge, it clears the door. And that works as long as your drawer slide is down in here and not trying to be right behind the hinge. So to make that work, I just need to put some cleats, some pieces of wood that are three quarters of an inch thick on this wall, and then we can mount the drawer slides following the instructions. Now to make sure that I get those things spaced evenly, I've cut down some pieces and I can use these as guides. So I've got that one down there for the bottom shelf and then I can set my three quarter inch piece here, screw it in, then I've got another piece that I can set on top of that and just work my way up. Now that I've got these pieces in place, I'm gonna find the center of those, and that's gonna be the center of the drawer slide. And you'll also notice that they're not pushed all the way forward, like typically you do with drawer slides. You want them at the front of the cabinet. Well, because I spent the time making dovetails on these trays, I don't wanna hide those behind drawer slides. So I'm making it a little bit harder on myself, and I'm putting the slides equal with the back of the tray instead of the front. That's where there's this offset here. You'll also notice that there's a big gap down here at the bottom, underneath the bottom tray that we're putting in, and that's because I wanted to both clear the hinge and have a little extra space that we can put a griddle or big things like that underneath these trays. Ew! <laughs> what? Overall, it's a really simple project, and obviously you don't have to do the dovetails if you don't want to, but for me, this served a few purposes. It taught me how to do something new, and it took advantage of a kind of weird, deep space and turned it into something that is really well organized and we can take advantage of to store a lot of stuff in. Now, the cool thing about this is that you could do the same type of thing in any cabinet in your house, whether you built the cabinet or not, that doesn't matter. You can build some custom trays to fit inside that space. If this gave you an idea for something that you could do at your house or gave you the courage to try something you've never tried before, I would love to hear about it down in the comments. We've got tons of other types of projects that you may wanna check out, and if you're not subscribed, be sure to do that as well so you can catch every new video. That's it for this one. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Hey Ow. The cool thing is here, it has optional Optional? Ha! Ah. Ah. Alright, do you want to get in?